Hello, my name is Keith Anthony Blanchard, spiritual teacher, best-selling author, and founder of Center of Light. I now bring to you my new audio series, Center of Light Reprogramming, tapping into the source of infinite love, wealth, and expansion. The loving seed thoughts herein will be planted into the fertile ground of your subconscious and bring about your tree of life, that which you desire and deserve in ways you never thought possible. Sit back, close your eyes, and completely let go. Being by yourself. For a long time. How long, Keith? You'll know when. <laughs> However long it takes. Get to solitude. Aloneness. Alone. Seclusion. Privacy. Stillness. Peace. Separation. In this context. Seclusion. I did say seclusion. Being alone. For those who live alone are often more so than not by themselves. If they're good at it, they'll tell you there's nothing like it. Solitude, privacy, silence, no talking, no story. A lot like that empty space I'm demonstrating. Be it working in your garden, playing a guitar, prayer, meditation. Simply turning the world off. And I don't mean going into a meditation. I'm talking about being by yourself on purpose. That way you will be in purpose, in purpose. Purposefully you will find yourself. But sometimes when the noise gets a little too loud in the world and we get addicted to the world or a person, the universe says, and you have no choice but to hear it. In fact, it doesn't say anything. It's been saying, now it's going to do something about it. And life partner, so you thought, both of you thought, ends. And you find yourself in that place. And that place, I've been there for two years. It's not fun. It makes you want to get out of it. Stay in it. A dark night of the soul is where you're going to find the light. So what darkness is it? It's not a darkness that you're really in, per se. It's you, scared, alone, afraid, broken. And you want to ball your eyes out. Good, ball your eyes out. Purge your soul has been poisoned by the outside world and needing things, other people and or a person to be your savior or your saving grace. If you do that strong enough, hard enough, you will find yourself in a very hard place. Rough, tough, and gruff. And there's no way out except you finding your way in. This is how you win. Solitude, the gift of it. That dark night of the soul, I didn't like it, I wanted out. But it was forcing me to stay inwardly. Not because I missed a spiritual guy. It just kept me in this place until I worked my way upward, which is inward, forward, toward, letting the old thing go, completely letting it go, surrender. One of the greatest benefits of solitude and the gift you will receive because of it and from it and through it 
is surrender. Going back to that which is tender. Solitude. Well, Keith, I'm just, I just, I'm okay by myself. I just don't like to be by myself. I call horse hockey. <laughs> if you truly know what it's like to be alone, I'm not meaning lonely. There's a big difference between alone and lonely. Alone means I'm by myself. Lonely means I'm by myself, but I need something else. Reflect inside, you can do it in this moment. How often are you alone? Maybe start going out a couple times a week, or whatever, whatever is your way and go do something you've been wanting to do that's not busy. It's important that you're not busy. It's about me, me. If I don't have enough money in my checking account, if I write a check to someone because I wanna do a good deed, a good deed indeed is not what's going to happen because the check is going to bounce. It's temporary. So only when we become the permanent fixture can we permanently fix ourselves into a better possibility. One way to find that sweet surrender is to pray like a lover, not a beggar. Pray like a lover, you're in it. I'm in the solitude, the grace, the stillness, be still and know of God. I'm still, I'm still. You can be very still planting flowers. You can be very still meditating or praying. You can be very still cooking. You, you know, you may have to stir the pot. You're in inspiration. You're thinking about what you're gonna add, what you're gonna be, and all these inspiring possibilities of what to add into your spiritual soup will come up simply and you add a little bit of this and a little bit of that again for those who practice being alone and you're getting really good at it you're probably wanting more of it you're not trying to run away from reality or push people aside they, we all have our place to each other. But when you can be in solitude and experience the gift of it, <laughs> there's no force here. There's no force. There's no force. There's no, ah. Uh, it's you. This is what you say to yourself. It's me. It's all about me. And I deserve to be selfish. So much so that I push everybody out of my house. The party's over. It's two o'clock in the morning. Y'all need to go home. Likewise, when life's party, metaphorically, is two o'clock in the morning, y'all need to go home and I need to stay in my house or in my sanctuary. Your sacred little place, big place, whatever it is you've created, that's a shrine and an alt or an altar to your deity which is center of light, you, the gift of solitude, prayer and meditation, communion with God, simply by being, simply sitting and doing nothing. Or doing something, but there's not a whole bunch to it. You're truly involved, but there is no force. In such subtlety, people think it takes muscles and might and bombs falling out of military aircraft and they call that power. That's not power at all. You want to look at real power? The power that holds everything together. Even your body holds the planetary body, the celestial bodies, the galactic bodies, the cosmic bodies together. It's subtlety. It's solitude. God sits in stillness and all the universe swirls around him as extensions of itself, but the further you go to the outer rings of the spiritual nucleus of self, the more noise you will hear and the louder it will be and the more dense it will be, the energy that is. You ever heard the expression, he thinks the world revolves around him? 
That's God. <laughs> the universe revolves around God. Revolves from the core of solitude, infinite possibility, silence. Be still and know with me. I'm forever going to be in no and spirit would say. Forever. In fact, without me sitting in silence and solitude and being alone forever, all of it would disappear. There's no, there's no noise in the core. <laughs> in the nucleus, there is no noise. All there is is infinite possibility, yearning, churning, turning, and burning within itself. And if God has will, or chooses to will something, whatever that will be, it doesn't pull out a hammer and a chisel and start making something. It's simply in such silence, likely liken this to picking up a very small pebble and throwing it into a very still pond. Boop. And things nicely flow and comes back to the center from whence it was created by the Creator. This is to get the solitude. It's powerful. It's quiet. And the quieter you learn to become, the quieter you will be and express that. So much so, some people may start missing you because in such a way you've become invisible to them. They might be used to hearing you talk or chiming in. And you could be sitting right there next to them and they not even, may not even recognize you because they're expecting the you that they know you to be, to be chatty. And that's not you anymore. And so in your becoming invisible, you've shifted up a layer, a level, another vibrational frequency. It's a multi-layered onion for sure. There is a very significant power that is you. It doesn't belong to you, it is you. You just don't know that you have it. I'm still learning, but I'm accepting my truly. I'm loving the solitude. Pretty much my whole life I've been alone, except the 10 years that brought me to the dark night of the soul. Well, I learned experience integrated the gift of solitude the gift of solitude it's just nothing in such a way you become a living altar because you've been altered you become a living altar, a living, breathing, personified altar who has been altered and now your life is something you offer. And your offering, this wheel begins to turn and fold within itself and you begin to expand into consciousness, into consciousness, into consciousness. I've gotten emails often, people saying, Keith, there's certain things I see you just, that happens for you just like that in the form of your intuition. You know, how do you do that? I don't know how to do it. I don't try to do anything. I just sit and I'm quiet. And even when I'm sharing like I am now, there is a getting more profound quiet in me. I've quietened down a lot in five years. Wow. The mind, how much you say, who I speak to, who I don't. Speak really when it's time. Again, meditation and prayer are phenomenal. But this is not the quiet I'm speaking about. You want to find out solitude? Go to an ashram. Though there may be other people, you feel unified separately. No one wants to talk to you because they, they're interested in growing. So they want their solitude. Go to an ashram, take a pilgrimage, a journey, a soul journey, anywhere. Stay two weeks, stay a month, however long you choose. Be gone, gone, 
gone, completely gone into a place where you feel alone. And I don't mean I'm by myself. It will bring out the loneliness in you. Good. Well, Keith, I don't feel like being lonely. Yes, you do. If growth is what you want, you need to dive your ass into the loneliness and then find yourself in it, then the nightmare is over. If we can liken solitude to a very tiny seed, that core, the nucleus of God, the idea, the seed, that which brings forth life, just a little seed. How can such a little seed create an amazing tree? We're talking about a 60 foot tree, huge, big old tree, like, like an oak tree. All from this one little burst of light. At conception of anything is a burst of light. Did you know that? This video that will show you. When two cells come together, father, mother, that's a burst of light, a discharge of light. How can a tiny seed create a majestic, mighty oak and the potential of infinite forest all from one seed? See, when the sperm and the egg come together, they're not having a discussion. <laughs> they're not talking about how things are gonna go about. And this dance, this marriage, the universe begins to move. And it brings everything onto this earth by its unity. So when something is being birthed, there's no, there's no conversation happening. Most of the time when you're with a life partner and you're having a really good moment, you'd probably agree it's not about speaking. You can just be in this kind of music, candles and incense just laying in bed, hands behind your head, whatever you're doing and just being in the space of another. There's no talking happening, solitude. And if you can have solitude with not only yourself and other people of solitude, minds and hearts come together, the level of silence and the gift of it graduates over and over and over with every solitude, attitude, person that's together. That's why if you get on an ashram and everyone is in their silent space, which means you do your thing, I'm gonna do my thing. This is about my dialogue, my samadhi with God. But when you all go to the temple, and you go into solitude or prayer and meditation together, thousands of you, wow. you begin to hear the silence. The silence gets so loud, it almost becomes deafening. Bet we never thought silence had a tone, a sound, a volume. My friend, it does. Because you're hearing it with a whole new skill set. It's a total different skill set of listening. Solitude. Stop moving around. Don't make excuses. Just stop moving around. Try it for yourself. Extend your practice if you're doing it already. The importance of solitude and the practicing of being still and quiet. Again, this does include prayer and meditation. But I'm speaking about a lifestyle. Listen how, now, you're gonna hear it in the music, you're gonna hear the music. But in the music, listen to the non hurriness of it. It's not hurry. It's not trying to yank you into the experience. It's trying to put you adrift onto, it's blowing you like a feather adrift on the breath of God. That's what solitude is. In between the music, listen to the solitude, listen to the quiet. And 
what you have or will experience in such a place, everything is possible. And if it comes up into your consciousness or into what you would call your mind, then it's possible. No matter what you think it is, everything is possible. It's impossible for everything to not be possible. How do you like that for conundrum? Can I heal myself? Be still and know. Can I create this new house, this new partner, this new job, but more abundance in my life? I don't know, can you? Can you do it without effort? But if you can have money, abundance in any form, by not doing anything at all, or you open to the idea? Solitude and the gift of it. It's a gift. In the empty space between the notes is the grace, the real music actually. Center of light, you, me, we. Kick your kids out of the house. Y'all go do your thing. Do what you gotta do. And you sit there, turn the TV off. Just turn the TV off. In fact, if you're new at this practice, just sit there. Don't put the TV on. Don't, don't even put some cool floaty music around. Like, like you hear right now. Don't even do that. Just sit there. Well, Keith, it sounds boring. You, you think it sounds boring because you have no understanding of what actually lives in there. When you touch it, <laughs> those who don't love themselves have never spent time alone. You will only find self-love when you find self-time. You will not love yourself until you are by yourself. Because when you're by yourself and you have not done the spiritual work, you wanna put the TV on. The point is, anything that comes from the outside absolutely will distract you from your core, from your inner space and peace. So you sit there doing nothing by yourself. And then trust me, things will begin to show up inside. How do you feel about said things showing up? How do you feel? Well, I wanna go do something your choice or you can sit there and heal something else will show up something you feel that you really 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 have to do the question is do you really 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 or is your mind convincing you to make you think that you really 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 need to go do this thing now it comes to a level of honesty and only in solitude and silence would you ever have seen that reflection of yourself that is very deceiving? It's about receiving the grace, the gift. So what does this gift look like? It doesn't have an appearance at all. You can't touch it. You can't touch solitude. You can't. It's not something that you, you can just grab. You can't grab solitude. You can't, you can't even see it. But guess what? You can touch it and you can see it. Do you want to touch it? Do you want to see it? Elaine says, yes, I love it for sure. And things do show up when I'm just being. And as you sit still on your couch, on your chair, or just lie in your bed, when those things show up, write it down. I wanna go do something, I'm bored. Write it down, I'm bored. Write it down, get it out of your mind, put it on the paper, make it tangible. I miss my friend, so-and-so, let me give him a call, write it down. You will start seeing where you are attached. That's the gift that comes from being quiet sitting alone, exclusion, privacy, privacy in the UK, just be 
quiet. I'm sitting there. Self-evaluation. You will feel your body, you will feel your digestive tract, you will feel your heartbeat, you will feel your, the blood as it courses through your veins. It's magical. Then you really get to play and it plays with you back. So what is this thing? It's not a thing. How do I achieve it? You don't achieve it. There's nothing you can do to get there. So what's the point of all this if there's nothing I can do to get there? That's the point. You don't do anything to get there. You be still. You just sit there. You have to go to the store and you have to do something. Turn the world off and go do your task. Stay in the space of quiet. Someone speaks to you that you don't know and they're just saying, hi ma'am, just look at them and say it. You have to speak. Speaking is phenomenal, it's a gift. We project outward, so there's a lot involved in dialogue, beautifully so. But when it comes to a spiritual practice of solitude, per se it's not allowed. If you truly want solitude and altitude. I love being alone. I love people. I love kissing some cheeks and hugging some necks. I do. I like being alone. It's my communion. It's my samadhi. In creating the things I do, I do it for me. Center of light me. Are you doing for you? Center of light you? Or are you going into the center? Which is the light. You're the light. It's that easy. When you were created to come to the earth, sperm cell, egg says how you doing nice to meet you oh i got an infinite friend now that turns into a child nine months later there's no conversation happening but something powerful the most amazing thing that's ever been created the human being bruh <laughs> fall to self-deservingness and you will fall and you'll find yourself not just being quiet. In this way, being quiet is almost like an action. It's like a verb. <laughs> what are you doing, Keith? I'm being quiet. That's a verb. You fall into solitude and silence, the stillness of the core, the ever infinite active core. Solitude is the black hole that the ego is not strong enough to traverse. Solitude is the black hole that the ego is not strong enough or capable of being able to traverse. So that means when you go, when you actually are able to get into the black hole, that which everything is birth, where time and space collapses, that core, you break through the ego. So the ego cannot get into complete solitude. So when you sit alone, all the noise will simply just start to rise. I wanna go do this with my friend, I'm bored. This, that, the other. I wanna do this because I'm bored. I wanna alleviate this longing in me. So when you break through the ego into the swirling vortex of the black hole, what is the black hole? We talked about a seed earlier. Actually, black holes are considered the cosmic wombs because in it, not only does it collapse time and space, it births stars forever, infinity. That's the seed. It's planted. It continues the, the, the process of life. Equally, a black hole can destroy. So they both cancel each other out, create and destroy and become, there is no create and destroy. All there is, is, is. And you will see that and be able to touch it in ways that you will not be able to see it in the form of an idea. Right now, if you can see it in the form of an idea, I see what you're talking about. Fantastic. Congratulate yourself. Follow that rabbit into the black hole, into the solitude, because there is a magnificent, majestic, beautiful, delicious gift that belongs to you, belongs to me. It's the same gift. In fact, when you grab yours and I grab mine, 
We're going to be looking at each other and go, what are you doing here? <laughs> so what are you doing here? Meditation and prayer is beautiful. You will find very sweet spaces, spots in your rituals and your blessing of yourself and other people. This is different. This is deeper. If you can pray and meditate in that different, deeper space I'm referring to, you've just exponentiated your growth 10 times full. Because you have one beautiful possibility that when you begin to ignite and illuminate in it, awareness and expansion that takes place in your being. Now you have another one. And when these two come together and they see each other and they do this, something else happens. I've had this happen to me many times in my life. In this destruction creation. And they're both are true, but they're not the truth. What does all this mean? doesn't mean a damn thing that's the point it's not supposed to mean anything at all it's your energy to wield mold manipulate transform transfigure and whittle and wield and create this thing whatever this thing is this is called liberation whether your thing and my thing are two different things that's how it's supposed to be because Otherwise, the point is, there would be no point. Mine's not yours and yours is not mine. There's lots of constructs, walls, models, ideas between the heart and the monkey. So the trick you must learn to master is to reach down from your mind and up to your heart. <laughs> Solitude. Practice it. Do it tonight. Hubby, wifey, kitties, get out of the room. Or when they go tomorrow, make some time for yourself. Do the meditation, do the prayer, if that's what you want. But if you pray and meditate often, put that to the side for today. Sit there. With your eyes open. I don't mean going to meditation. Just sit there with your eyes open. Just be. And things will show up for you. They have always been showing up. And they have what's caused you to make not so awesome decisions. And you find yourself in a situation. Because all that stuff is still in there. And they're trying to outdo each other. I'm more important than you, so this one gets louder. And this one over here says, bullshit. I'm more important than you, and this one wants to get louder. And next thing you know, you have a shaken Coke bottle that one day that cap is going to come off regardless. Be it in a big mess or even just a quick spillover. Solitude, there's a gift in there. It's not only about just being quiet. It's about falling into non-existence. That's scary shit, isn't it? I don't want to not exist, trust me. It's a leap. You have to jump off the high diving board to get in the water, the life water. Find that part of you that is nothing. That is pure being. 